Third Baptist and guest. First giving honor to God. We thank him for allowing us to come to his house of worship one more time. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Our scripture this morning will come from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ephesians, chapter 4. When you've located that scripture, please respond with amen.
Amen. Okay, our reading will begin at verse 14 through verse 17, wherein these words are found. And that section is laid off with the following title, The New Life in Christ. I say again, The New Life in Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in, un, into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of the mind. The word of God for the people of God. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for this day, a day which we've never seen before, and a day which we shall never see again. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, you are God. And Father God, we want to thank you for coming by our sleeping couches early this morning, giving us the movement of our limbs and the articulation of speech, and allowing us to arise in the land of the living one more time. And Father God, 
we thank you for allowing us to assemble in your house of worship where we can be fed, nurtured in the admonition of your word, and be equipped to wage war in this turbulent world. Father God, you didn't say that the race would be easy, but you said that you would be with us even until the end of the age. And Lord God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins, sins of commission as well as omission, that you would cast them on the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. And that being done, dear God, we want to praise your holy and righteous name. You've been a good God. You've been a kind God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father God, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not praise you enough. Father God, we want to thank you most of all for send, sending your darling son Jesus into this world, who bled, suffered, and died, who ransomed lost man back to you. And because Jesus lives, we can live also. And Father God, we ask that you would touch each family that is represented here. We ask that you would touch those who are on the way. And we ask that you would touch those out in virtual land, dear God. And you would touch those who have the desire to be in the midst, but for some reason could not be here. But praise be to God for the rich revelation that you're a God who's everywhere at the same time. You sit high and you look low and you know the numbers of ha hairs of ha hair on our heads, dear God. You know each one of your children. You know our hearts. You know our thoughts even before we think them. Give us the strength to trust in you, realizing full well that you would never leave us or forsake us. And Father God, we ask that you would touch Robin Ford, that you would dip him in that deep pool of riches. And not just Robin Ford, but that you would touch all our ministers who have been jewels to us in the midst of this pandemic environment. The, the word has continually gone out and equipped us to stand in these last and difficult days. And Father God, make us ever mindful of the fact that thy word must we hide in our hearts that we might not sin against you. And Father God, we just want to thank you for the rich blessings on yesterday. The souls who entered into your kingdom, dear God. And we know you rejoice when just one comes in. But praise be to God, we had numerous individuals. And heaven is rejoicing. And we're glad, dear God. And we ask that you would strengthen us, equip us for what lies ahead. Father God, we ask that the word would go out and not come back void. That it will accomplish what is being said. That someone's heart might be pricked, that they will cry out, what must I be to? What must I do to be saved? For we realize full well that the wages of sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life. Strengthen us, dear God, that we will continue to run and not go weary. That one day we may stand before thee that we may hear these words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Now come on up, and I'll make you rule over many things. These and other blessings we ask in our darling son Jesus' name, and because of him, we can continually pray. Amen, Amen. and hallelujah.
don't know about you, but sometimes I wonder myself if I have the same zeal now that I had when I first established a relationship with the Lord. That's food for thought. That's food for thought. Thank you, choir. That brought back great memories. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for those memories. Our announcements this morning. Praise God for the, the, for the increase on yesterday. This was accomplished through baptism and dedication. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Continually showing yourself strong. Bible study is scheduled for 4 May at 6 o'clock p.m., the Zoom platform will be utilized. Please contact Deacon Ron Thompson for further information. Please consider getting vaccinated or obtaining your COVID booster shots. Uh, the COVID virus is still mutating. New variants are emerging. For your protection and protection of those around you, Please wear your mask while inside. Please be mindful of your mental health state and that of those around you. Depression is real, people. Depression is real. People are isolating, and some people don't like being by themselves. So we want to be cognizant of that. Our 80th church anniversary is 22 May. Please consider a do donation of $100 or your best donation above your tithes and offerings. $180, yes, sir. The Shallow Annual Session ha has been scheduled for 22, G 22 June. The Shallow Annual Session has been scheduled for 22 June. And along with that, those uh, who are finishing high school and going on to college, we have re received an application for the Dr. C.R. Austin Leadership Scholarship. And the deadline for applying for that is June 3rd. I am the point of contact. I am De Deacon Carlson Brown, for those who don't know me. Contributions may be given via the following means. Church track, giving through electronic means, the United States Postal Service, and in person. There are some of you who are among us who have teaching skills. And those skills are needed in order to conduct our Sunday school. So please give some consideration to that. Sunday school teachers are needed. The deacons meeting, the deacons will meet tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. Please be in prayer for the Jackson, Tucker, Brown, and De DeVos family at the home, home going of their loved ones, Dr. Pansy Jackson and Deacon Michael DeVos. There may be others that we are not aware of. Please be mindful of those who have suffered sickness, loss, and bereavement. There has been so much going on. Uh, I know in the last week, I've been informed of the home going of five people. You know, and some of you may have experienced the same thing. But people, we have the power. God gave us the power. In his word and through our prayer. 
Hope is not lost. And we need to hold on to that fact. We are the light of the world. Please take, please take on that role and let your light shine as you move throughout this world. Be blessed. Deacons and ushers, what time is it? Turn to God, our Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for God, for the health and strength, the activity that thou man. Father God, we ask you to bless this offering. Bless the ones who gave, bless the ones who wanted to give but didn't have to give, Father God. We ask you to bless these tithes and offering for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Let the church say amen.
church are minister this morning is none other than R Reverend Joseph Ford. <laughs> Reverend Ford is a native of Petersburg. Many of you know him. Uh, he has traveled extensively in this area in terms of ministering the music and now the gospel. Reverend Ford is a multi-talented individual uh, engaging in diverse occupations. But I would I have gleaned from my conversation with him that the most important roles that he has is as a father, as a grandfather, as a husband to Sharon Ford, and most of all, as a child of God. that you open your hearts, open your mind, let the word permeate your soul. And I ask that you take your right hand After the next sermonic selection, the voice, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Joseph Ford. Hear ye him.
Let us pray, our Father and God in heaven. We humbly come to your house and say thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that you've allowed us to come together on this Sabbath. We ask, Lord God, if there's anything that would hinder me from you going forth and using me as your servant, we ask that I will remove it right now in the name of Jesus. For, Father, I am nobody, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So I ask now, God, that you take away self and that you rise up in me and use me as your vessel, that your people may hear a word in a time such as this. And God, we don't, I'm not seeking the glory, I'm not seeking the praise, but I'm praying that you will be lifted up in the message that's in the song. We ask it now in the name of Jesus, and we forevermore give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his name's sake, amen. First of all, I want to say praise the Lord. Thank God, all right, huh? All right, all right, all right. He woke you up this morning, so he should be all right, huh? We, we thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to be here. We thank the official board and the associate ministers who are supportive of we one to another. And, 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 and we want you to know, you know, we know when we're in situations like this, the devil get busy. And, and, and he tried to pull us apart from one another. But we thank God that he's allowed us to stay together to to understand the tricks of the enemy and to recognize that it ain't about us, but it's about Jesus Christ. Huh? But the, the, the first thing I want to do is thank Brother Digan Brown huh, for the uh, introduction and, and, and for the scripture. But with the introduction, Digan Brown said, you need to stop bringing your bow. But you know what? I think he did a great job huh? because... Um, it's not important what I've accomplished. It's, it's not important what I've done. What's important is to know that I love Jesus. And, and I'm trying to do now what Jesus has called and God had appointed me to do. Uh, so I think he did an outstanding job. And secondly, I want to apologize to Digging Brown because he read a great scripture. <laughs> and it's my fault. I sent them the wrong scripture. But that's all right, huh? We'll get two out of one today, huh? So, so if you have your Bibles, I would like for you to turn to Hebrews uh, 4 and 16. Hebrews 4 and 16. just going to focus on this one verse today. And it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and if I were to use the topic or subject today, I would 
you, God, amazing grace. I, I, I know you've heard this word mentioned uh, many, many times, and I know that um, it's a hymn that, that we've heard over for many years. And, and if you let me tell it, I, I, when I was young, it was one of the worst songs I wanted to hear. One, it was slow. And if we be honest with ourselves, as young folks, we ain't like nothing slow. <laughs> we wanted the beats and the hops and the jumps and the jams. You know what I'm talking about. When they played slow music, we were like, Lord have mercy. This stuff is putting me to sleep. <laughs> but, 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 the, but the Lord laid in my heart as I was reading the, 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 the word amazing grace. So, so, so you know, uh, today I want to help you to understand where this song reflects in our spiritual lifestyle. Um, the song Amazing Grace was written by John Newton. Let me give you a little history. I know we like to be pressed for time, but sometimes we need to take our time and so we can be taught some things and then ministered unto. Uh, uh, John Newton wrote this song, Amazing Grace. He was born in 1725, uh, and then uh, as he grew older, he became a, a, a slave trader. He had a ship, and he went out and got slaves and traded them and made money off them. Well, one, uh, on one occasion, John Newton was on his way back from picking up his slaves, and, 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 and he had a, a, a hole in the ship. And the ship was sinking, so John Newton, he prayed to the Lord. And, and miraculously, the cargo that was in the bottom of the ship uh, sealed the hole. And it allowed the ship to drift to safety. So this was the first time that John Newton decided that, hey, I'm going to change my lifestyle a little bit, and I'm going to become a Christian now because... God has done something that I had never seen done before. When I thought that I was going to be sinking and never to rise, he allowed me to run on a, a little while longer. But you see, John Newton being who he was and had the money that he was making off of being a, 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 a ship, a, a slave uh, a trader, Newton still kept on investing in slave trading. But after a few years, John Newton uh, had a stroke. And it was during that time of recuperating that he came to himself. And then in, in, in 1764, he was uh, uh, ordained as an angelical priest. And, and after that, after a while of being there, in 1772, he wrote, Amazing Grace. And, 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 and to make a long story short, it came out that after he had written Amazing Grace, John Newton finally uh, renounced uh, the type of work he was doing. And he started um, uh, uh, giving apology for how he used to behave and conduct himself. And, and then he began to preach the gospel. All right, and, and in this song, uh, uh, one may ask the question, what does this song Amazing Grace bring to us? And, and I would like to explain to you before I get into the text that the, 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 the song Amazing Grace uh, means that, and the meaning behind that story is that the gospel message uh, 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 is that we were, People who were spiritually blinded, wretched, uh, wicked in our innermost parts of being and separated from God. It was through the grace of God that one can find their way home to God. In other words, it's saying that the song itself, as it began, says, uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, you know, that saved the wretch like me, huh? See, see, and then the rest of the verse uh, go on to tell us that uh, uh, the benefits of God, 
a great, and it teaches us uh, to reverence God. It enables us to face our fears. It is pressure. It can carry us through our dangerous situations. It defends us and brings us to eternal life with Jesus Christ. Huh? That's the song of amazing grace. Uh, and, and I guess you say, well, how much of the lyrics uh, lined up with the song or of the song lined up with the Bible? But I come to tell you today that most of the lyrics, if not all of the lyrics, uh, in this song, uh, it lines up uh, with the word of God. Huh? And, and, and just for a moment, I want to say this. Uh, see, the, 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 the problem we have today is we like songs that give us the hallelujah feeling, the praise the Lord feeling, the jump up and dance feeling, the clap your hands feeling. But I come to tell you today that the message is in those old spiritual hymns uh, that, that, that we used to sing way back when. You see, you see, the first thing I'd like to share with you about this song, Amazing Grace, it starts out with uh, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, and it, that saved a wretch like me. And, and, and that helps me to understand that this Amazing Grace that we're talking about today uh, if we look at the words and read it, we would understand that this amazing grace can redeem us. People may say, what is redeem? It means being saved or delivered from sin or its consequences. Huh? It also means uh, having been paid for, recovered and brought back or exchanged for. And if you read Ephesians 1 and 7, it says, And whom we have redemption through the blood and forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Huh? And what that tells us, that the writer says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. I want to stop for a minute and let you know that the word wretch has uh, two meanings. One is it's a meaning of unhappy and miserable person. We know people like that, don't we? They're unhappy, they're miserable, and they don't want you to be happy either. So they try to do everything they can to steal your joy. And then the second thing is that it is a a uh, despisable person. It, it, it's wicked. It's evil. Uh, it, it has no compassion for no one. And, 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 and then the song go on and say, but I think, before we go further, I think both of those uh, definitions fit the light of Jeremiah, who in 17.9 said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Huh? Uh, 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 uh. And, and then the song goes on to say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Uh, let us know that the king, that this, 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 this verse, uh, 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 line, lets us know that even though we, we think we're on the right track. We think we're doing the right thing. Uh, and, and we think what we are doing is what we ought to be doing. Because we see with a natural eye. And it said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. See, being lost is thinking eh, 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 you've been to church. <laughs> you've been baptized. Uh, uh, you're following the process of what church people do, but you don't have a personal relationship with God. So you find yourself thinking you're on the right track, and then years later, when you really get to know Jesus for yourself, you find out that you were a lost sinner that's been saved by grace.
Then he said, I was blind. Blind. <laughs> A lot of us still blind. Huh? Everything we do is right. Everything we say is right. Can't nobody do it like us. Uh, if it ain't our way, uh, it ain't nobody's way. Uh, if you ain't got a degree, you're dumb. Uh, if you ain't the one on top of the hill, then you on the bottom. So listen to what I have to say. You see, we, a lot of us today, are still blinded by the light of the world and not of the light of everlasting life. Huh? So, 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 so we, we are blind and, and can't see uh, but, but then when Jesus came into our lives, that eye that we saw as far as we could see as a normal person turned into a spiritual eye that we can see beyond what every man, normal man and woman, boy and girl can see, and we start seeing things from the spiritual eye, which allowed us to grow stronger in Christ Jesus. See, what it does here, it says, this verse lets us know that kings and presidents cannot pardon our transgressions. Silver and gold cannot buy our forgiveness. And medication and science cannot produce it. But it lets us know that Jesus Christ can redeem us from all of our sins. So the songwriter says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a red like me. I once was lost, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. See, if you look in Ephesians uh, uh, 2 and 8, it says, uh, uh, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that's not of yourself, but it's a gift from God. This lets us know that Jesus, through God, hmm, uh, he can go and reach down in the gutters of our despair and lift up our lost souls and, 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 and put our feet on the mark and mire clay and, and, and for it to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Jesus uh, can redeem his or her soul uh, from destruction. Uh, and that's the good thing we know about the verse number one. It says, amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a red like me. See, Newton was lost, even though he was a priest. Uh, but when he got to know who Jesus was, uh, he said, saved a red like me. Uh, and he said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, and what I was doing was wrong, but I thought it was right. I was lost, thinking to go to hell and never to ride no more. But now I'm found, because I found Jesus, and he delivered me. He brought me out of the walking down clay. He placed my feet on the solid rock today. He picked me up. Turn me around, turn my feet up on solid ground. This amazing grace. Ah, it's God's amazing grace. Ah, the second thing I want to share with you is that this amazing grace can release us. You heard me? Release us from our fears. See, the second verse started out with, "Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fear released. Now, if you look at that, you say something crazy about that. Taught my heart to fear. Then is my fear released. Well, if my heart fear. How should it be released? Huh? But the word says, taught my heart to fear and grace my fear release. 
Huh? This right here helps us to understand the first form of fear. Fear means uh, we learn to have deep reverence and respect for God. See, the Bible teaches us in no particular order that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, we know the word says wisdom. And it's also the beginning. Well, let me share that in, in case folks don't believe that. When it says wisdom, go to Job 28 and 28. Or go to Proverbs 9 and 10. It, it, the beginning of wisdom. It is also the beginning of knowledge. If you read Proverbs uh, 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 15 and 33, it's also the beginning uh, of long life. Uh, if you read Proverbs 10 and 27, it's also the beginning of salvation. If you read Isaiah 33 and 6, it's also the beginning of confidence. If you read Job 4 and 6, it's also the beginning of blessings. If you read Psalms 112 and 1, it's also the beginning of hatred of evil. If you just read a little bit of Proverbs 8 and 13, it's also the beginning of cleansing from sin. See, the writer points this out, that God's undeserved favor has taught him deep reverence and respect for God. Huh? And, and, and then it goes on and says, and grace, my fear relief. This type of, 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 of fear refers to being afraid. Come on now. Hmm? We know. We act like we don't know. But when we should have been on fire for the law, we was running from the law. We know running means that we are what? Come on, talk to me. Running means that we are what? Afraid. Huh? And, and we don't want to admit it, but we got to understand truth don't set you free. Truth makes you free. Huh? That you won't go back that way again. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, see. This, 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 this fear is a type of fear referred to by being afraid. Is, but I want to let you know that God is on a rescue mission for our soul. And the word lets us know he will always be with us. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. Then it goes on to say how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Well, stand right here where I'm at. Today's world is full of many, many, many fears. And we, as people, are afraid to live. We are afraid to die. We are afraid to be rich or wealthy. We are afraid of poverty. And we are afraid of being young. And some of us are afraid of being old. We are afraid to recognize Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are afraid to stand up and speak up for what's wrong. We are afraid. And if you say you're not afraid, let, let me help you out a little bit. There are some things that take the place in our society right now today. And some of these things says it's an abomination uh, against God. Some of these things say that we are we're supposed to respect what our government tells us until it interferes uh, with what the word of God says. Huh? And yet, we are still bowing down to what society tells us. Why? Because some of us are afraid we'll lose our jobs. Some of us are afraid we won't have a church to preach in. Some of us are afraid. Uh -huh. We don't like to hear this preaching. But if you're going to get it right, you got to hear it right, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are afraid 
and yet we say we love the Lord. But I want you to know God's amazing grace releases fear. Huh? Now I want you to hear this and I'm going to move on. Uh, 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 uh. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So, 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 hey, that backs up what I say. Ah, we are afraid, but yet we don't realize that if we are children of God, much how much you try to knock us down we got a spirit of, of love uh, and he gives us a spirit uh, of a sound mind what are you saying preacher you see no matter what you say if I got me that's enough uh, why because he gave me a sound mind uh, I can decide and separate what you feel takes away all of my fears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear me today. Ah, because we need to get on the right track. We need to start running the right race. We need to start standing on the promises of God. Third thing this amazing grace does for us is reassure us huh, through our danger, through our troubled times, through our situations of life, huh, through those moments when it seems like there is no hope. This amazing grace reassures us that God is by our side. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The songwriter say, through many dangers, cores and snares, I have already come. Twas grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Now, I, when, I was, when I was reading and putting this together, when I got here, I read Psalms 91 and 11. And it reads, for he shall give us, give his angels. Let me get it right so you'll know it. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. <laughs> and I got excited because I, I, I discovered that one of the function of the angels is to watch over God's children. Huh? Yeah, see, I want you to understand that it should be comforting to know that God watch over us even in times of great stress. And in times of fear, in times when it seems like our joy has been stolen, in times when we don't know which way to turn, in times when we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, God has a way to letting us know that he's with us through all of our trials, all of our tribulations, all of our heartbreaks, all of our setbacks, all of our letdowns, all of our disappointments, all of our trials and tribulations. He has a way of letting us know that 
I am with you even into the end of time. You see, God's amazing grace is sufficient for those who put their trust in him. See, 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 we don't understand it when we don't trust him. Huh? You see, your friends and your loved ones may forsake you. They may turn their back on you. They may say you've been sick too long. Ain't no need to keep worrying about you. Huh? Job let you know that too. Then. His friends let you know. Huh? Man, we've been fooling around with him too long. Man, curse God going to die, man. Man, you done done something, you know. But, 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 but this grace. Your loved ones may let you down. Turn their backs on you. Friends may walk away. But I stopped by for just a little while. To let you know that Jesus will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He said, I'm with you. Ah, when your friends let go, huh? when your loved ones turn their backs on you, huh? he lets us know that then I step in. Huh? When the doctor says there's no hope, huh? I'll be right there huh? because I am your God. Huh? You are my children. Huh? I am your master. Huh? You are my servants. Huh? I come to tell you that God, huh? he'll never leave you. Huh? God, he'll be with you even in your midnight hour. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is wait on him. All you got to do is call him. He'll be right there. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm glad. Because I've learned on this journey, everybody don't love you. Everybody ain't got your back. Everybody ain't wishing the best for you. Everybody don't want the best out of you. But God has kept me. God has brought me. When you press me down, he picks me up. He sticks by me when the going gets tough. I'm glad about it. Ah. It's amazing grace. And this last and final thing. I want to share with you about God's amazing grace. His grace has promised reward of eternity. Huh? The songwriter says in verse 4, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, <laughs> they say we're no less daily <laughs> to sing God's praise. Then it says what? Then when you first begun. Huh? So that means when we've done all we can do, 
and we can't go no more. But there's a home for us that he's prepared. You see, uh, 1 Peter 1.13 reads this. It says, wherefore, grid up the lion of your mind. Be sober and hopeful to the end. For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelations of Jesus Christ. You see, imminently, uh, uh, the return of Christ should be something that motivates us to live for him. This means being mentally alert, living with self-confidence and self-control, and, and, and setting our hope on Christ's return. And the question I ask you today, Is are you ready to meet Jesus? Huh? We spend more time trying to live on this side than we do trying to prepare for the other side. Huh? So I ask the question, are you ready to meet Jesus living as God's obedience? children. Huh? You see, you see, earth treasures and possessions are temporal. They will wear out. They will rust and also decay. But God's amazing grace will last I tell you, it is good to live by this amazing grace, and it's even greater to die by this amazing grace. You see, because Christ is preparing a mansion for those of us who love him. The gift of God is eternal life. He has a home in a mansion made and built in heaven that's not made by man's hand. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait until that day when this dusty march is over. There'll be no more lying, no more backbiting, no more talking about her. No more misuse. Uh, no more being a bruise. Uh, he got a home uh, up in that kingdom uh, waiting for me. Uh, I would hate to spend my life on this earth living hell uh, and then die and go to hell. Uh, so we need to get it right. Uh, we need to understand uh, that God's word is true. Uh, if we hold on uh, to his amazing grace, uh, if we keep the faith, uh, if we run the race, uh, if we don't give in, uh, don't give out, uh, if we don't turn around, uh, there's a promise uh, that everything uh, will be all right uh, after a while uh, in the sweet by and by. Hold on. You see, this amazing grace has taught me huh, that it redeems us. Huh? It, 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 it takes away my fear. Then this amazing grace reassures me. Like David said, there's no way, though. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, huh? Yeah, yeah, so it helps me to understand that through this, trials and tribulations, he got me. And then this amazing grace lets me know that one glad morning, when this life is over, I can fly away and hear him say, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved, huh, that saved, somebody ought to be happy right there, that should be a shouting moment because you know you were lost, lost to death, never to rise no more, but he saved a low life and no good person like me, huh? And I don't know about you, but I once was lost, but I thank God I'm found. In my life, I was blind too. But now I see. Why I see? Because I got Jesus. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. I, the word says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Huh? So I'm excited. I'm delighted. And I come to tell you today as I take my seat, brothers and sisters, we try to take these old hymns throw them in the corner. But I come to tell you something. These old hymns, not only just amazing grace, but in the sweet by and by, some glad morning when this life is over, ah, I should wear a crown. These old hymns, they got a message for you. They has a story for you. And every time now and then, when you can't see your way, when you can't feel your way, when you can't find your way. The songwriter said earlier that they quiet song, what? Take me back. We ought to go back and pick up them hymnals and realize that there's a message in each song. And we too would be able to say, amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace. Amazing grace, yeah, how sweet the sound that saved a wreck like me. Doors of the church is open. Seek him and why he's yet to be found. I stop worrying about what people got to say about me. And I'm beginning to realize that only what we do for Christ will last. Huh? And I want to share with you as the doors are open that this grace, you can't earn it. This grace, you can't buy it. This grace is nothing you can do to get it. But it's sufficient for all of us that will put our trust in him. Because this grace is given from God through Jesus Christ as a gift. So while you still got breath in your body, it ain't no shame. Y'all listen to me, Deb, you don't hear me no more. It's no shame in coming to Jesus right now. 
Uh, you can be in church all your life. You can stay in Norm but don't have a personal relationship. And you'll be lost and die and go to hell. So no matter how long you've been in church, while you still got breath in your body, now is the time to decide that for God I shall live and for God I shall die. Is there anybody, anybody who has come to the, 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 the reality that time is winding down? Every day we'll step closer to eternity. Anybody? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Are living the way of the world. And I want to live like God has promised that I can live. Is there one? Say he's waiting. eternal life. Man don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. You gotta find Jesus while he's still yet to be found. How I made it.
church. Good afternoon. We have Sister Octavia Moore joining us by Christian Experience. And Zahara Moore Brown joining us. Well, she's coming up for baptism. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soon as I get home, uh, we want to welcome and thank God for those who have come forward. And uh, the deaconess, um, um, Scott, she would handle you and get with you on your whatever it is that needs to take place. And for Ashley, is she here for prayer? And then what we're going to do is go ahead with the right hand of fellowship and communion and at the end, we'll add Ashley in with prayer, if that's all right with everybody. Amen. Let me tell you something about what just took place a few minutes ago. Brother Anthony Parham came up yesterday to be baptized. And that's what it's all about. He came up yesterday and he brought someone back today. Hallelujah. To become a member of this fold. Now that's worth saying hallelujah about. I mean, we've been in a pandemic. We're coming slowly out of it. But we're still in the blessing business. And folks are coming. They're coming to the house of worship. They're coming to God. And that's what it's all about. So right now we're going to ask. For all of those who came forward yesterday to be baptized, Zenora Dixon, Tamara Dennis, Princess Dixon, Mariah Griffin, not Z Zamir Pam, Kamari Pam, Malaysia Pam, Anthony Pam, Marika Mayo, if you all would come forward, and then our candidates who were dedicated on yesterday, praise God, Saya Winfield, Niaja Mitchell, Navea Mitchell, and Zatuan Washington. And if I forgot anyone, come on up. If I didn't call your name. Hallelujah. Did I forget anyone? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to Deaconess Shirley Doby, our church clerk. Yesterday, we witnessed something that was very, very enlightening. Not just to us, but we're quite sure the heavens and all were happy as well. At this time, we had children dedicated to the Lord. And that means that their parents also said that they would teach them as they grow up. And that's a blessing. In doing so, they rededicate themselves as parents 
to the maintenance of a Christian home where Christ shall be honored and the word of the law is held in reverence. So at this time, I would like to call, and I'm going to do the very best I can, people, on these names. Zatoni Washington. Zaytuan Washington. Is Zaytuan here? Come on, Zaytuan. Asia Mitchell. Nav okay. Navea Mitchell. Zaya Zaya Winfield. that they were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 30th day of April of 2022. <laughs> Denoria Dixon. Denoria, you're also going to get some church cards, okay? Princess Dixon. <laughs> Mariah Griffin. Is that right? Mariah. Okay. Kimari Khan. Mia Khan. <laughs> Anthony Perrin. <laughs> Anthony, these are your church hats. We're getting straight. We also want to give you the word of God so you have your own study Bible, okay? Marika Mayo. Mar Marika. Malaya Khan. Malaysia. Thank you. Let me get this one out. Tamara Dennett. anyone okay I want to make an announcement to you so that you will know and it will help you on next Sunday which is Mother's Day and you can bring your parents with you we are going to start our new members class at 8 45 a.m. And from there, we'll come into morning worship. We need all of our new members, the ones who are here today and the ones that were baptized earlier, please be present next Sunday morning at 845, okay? We welcome all of you to the Third Baptist Church family, all of you. All right, let the church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to extend the right hand of fellowship. We ask that all church officers, if you align against the walls, if you're prepared,
We ask that the candidates please make sure you keep your mask on and everyone have their mask on. And if we could get some marching music. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you so much.
Now we have a special treat before we go into communion, okay? Before we go into communion, we have one of our candidates, Miss Princess Dixon, from day one, day one, she has been telling me how much that she wants to sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I can tell you that yesterday, little Malaysia, Zenora, and Princess both came to me after baptism and said, thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so at this time, we're going to yield to our normal order of service, because I know I don't have no Pharisees in this place, and we're going to let this little girl sing her song for everybody. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Will we be torn for the love is right? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. to transition into communion. I want to remind each of you that it was on a Thursday evening when Jesus and his disciples sat in the upper room of a house. They knew that his time had come. They were there to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus knew that his time had come to die for the sins of the world. And he instituted what is known as the Lord's Supper. He took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he says, this represents my body. And he took the cup and he blessed it and he said that this represents the cup of the New Testament, the blood that will be shed for the remission of sins. And the disciples did not understand what he was saying. They told him that Moses gave us the true bread. 
And he says, Moses did not give you the true bread, but it's my father that gives you the true bread. For if any man cometh to me, he shall not hunger, and any man who believeth on me shall not thirst. And the disciples looked at him and they said, Lord, forevermore give us this bread. And so we're going to ask right now if everyone has a communion cup. Thank you, Deacon. We're going to ask Reverend Ford if he will bless the bread and the cup. Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity and this time that you've allowed us to come and bend before one another and take part in this communion. And God, we ask now that you would touch this bread and this wine and, 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 and take it from a common use and let it be used as a spiritual use. We pray, God, that we'll continue to do this until you return, that we will show your our love and our favor and obedience to you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray in Lord's name. Amen. And so you have heard the prayer and the blessing. Please know that it's at this time that we should examine ourselves we know that we're not worthy, but we need to take a moment just to examine ourselves because if any person drinks this cup without that self-examination, drinks damnation to the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're just going to take a second and each person purpose within their heart and ask the Lord for the forgiveness of sin. in the name of Jesus. And so now, let us take the bread that represents the body and let us all eat together. And the cup, which represents the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, let us all drink together. And afterward, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We're going to ask the choir right now to give us a very short selection. And then I'm going to ask Reverend Ford if he will come forward, do the closing prayer and the benediction. Sister Ashley, she can come back up now and then before we close. And as Ashley 
coming forward. We heard digging ground. And, and we want to pray for the family of Brother Wiggins who lost Stacy Johnson. Um, and, and before we go into prayer, I heard digging brown earlier say uh, an amazing thing happened on yesterday that uh, so many of our young folks was baptized. And I heard Reverend Bullock say today that it was a wonderful thing. And and I would like to inform us as a family at the Third Baptist Church that God has sent us children. Yes, yes, yes. And, and in order for a church to survive, we got to have young people. So I, I, I challenge us as a body of Christ that we may soon and very soon find something for our youth to do. Yes, yes, yes. That the, 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 the devil won't steal him from us and, and put them back out in the world. So we challenge ourselves that we would do what we can to get our young people active in the church and show them that they can still live in the world and still enjoy the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past. I hope for years to come. Shelter from a stormy blast in our eternal home. Father, we come right now just to say thank you. Oh, we're thankful because you've allowed us to run on just a little while longer. We thank you for Jesus the Christ who paid the ultimate price uh, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, God, because we realize that we should have been dead a long time ago. Uh, but you've allowed death to behave itself uh, that we may continue to run on for just a little while longer. And for this, God, we say thank you. Thank you because if not, we realize that we are sinners that's been saved by grace. Not of our own doing, but because of your grace and mercy that we're still able to say thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, because we realize you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I pray now, God, for the congregation. I pray now, God, for our, our, our world and our nation. And I pray now, God, for those that are have bereavement in their families and those that are going through challenges right now. I pray, God, that you continue to walk with them, talk with them, lead them and guide them and let them know that you're still walking by their side. God, I don't know what Sister Ashley's situation is, but I know you're a healer. I know you're a way maker. And I know, God, that they come faithfully, continuously to your throne of grace. A change shall come. So we pray today, God, that whatever it is that she's going through, whatever it is that she's dealing with, whatever it is that she's struggling with, we ask God in the name of Jesus that thou would touch, heal, deliver, restore, and renew her strength. We pray, God, because we know you're able to do just what you said. Now, God, we want to thank you for this experience. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for stopping by Third Church for just a little while. We thank you for giving us encouragement to run on just a little while longer. We thank you, God. For all that you have done and all you're still doing now. We pray for our world, our nation, our country, our, even the city of Petersburg. God, we pray that a change will come. And that we not be coward soldiers, but that we will be bold soldiers. Stand firm on your word. Go and take back what the devil has taken from us. And not be ashamed of the gospel. God, you do this, Lord, we'll continue to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We'll continue to lift you up, exalt thee, and elevate your name. For you are worthy. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. And for his name's sake, we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. And amen. 
Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let everybody say amen, 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 and amen. Go in peace.